As a top teacher on Skillshare, I've earned over $400,000 since I started teaching on the platform seven years ago. And in this video, I wanna talk about how I think my classes have earned me that success. And more specifically, how I think I've earned my status as a top teacher on Skillshare. But first, welcome to the channel. My name is Mr. Tom Froze. I am an illustrator and a top teacher on Skillshare where I've helped over 115,000 students unlock the world of commercial illustration. Without getting too much into it, Skillshare is an online class platform. You can go there and take all kinds of different creative kind of classes. You pay a subscription of around $160 a year, and that gives you access to everything. And as a teacher on Skillshare, you have the potential to earn money by putting your classes there and students watching your videos. It's kind of like YouTube where you earn based on minutes watched and stuff like that. I don't want to get into exactly how that works because quite honestly, I don't really understand it all. But what I do know is that it has become 75% of my income as an illustrator, as a teacher, you know, I really value my status as a top teacher. And so one thing that makes Skillshare classes special is that they're all very project driven. When you take a Skillshare class, you can expect to be able to not just watch lectures on a topic, but actually get a chance to really apply the knowledge that you're learning in a fun and exciting project. And the more fun and exciting that project is for your students, the more likely your class is going to be successful. And so this is really the first tip is if you're creating a Skillshare class, be sure that whatever you're teaching can actually be taught in an engaging project. So in my case, I teach illustration. So I make sure that students can apply whatever it is I'm trying to teach them, whether it's color theory or using Photoshop, that they have a chance to actually illustrate something in my classes, not just kind of play around in the tool or make abstract things to learn a, a tool or something like that, but to really get to make something that they're excited about. And so this leads me into my second tip for if you want to make a top teacher level class, you gotta make it project oriented, but that project has to be interesting. It has to be exciting and juicy. And this really gets into what I consider the secret sauce of my classes. I have three things that I want my projects to do. Until I'm able to think of a project that can do these three things, I don't feel like I have a class yet. So what does a project need to do? It needs to obviously be relevant to the skills you're trying to teach, but it also needs to be autobiographical. It needs to give students a chance to express themselves in some way. It can't just be a class where you tell them to do what you do, but gives them a chance to really think about what they do. An example of what I mean by autobiographical is in actually the first class I ever taught, it was called Inky Illustrations. And for the class project, I had students design a postcard to promote their business or to represent their hobby. And so right away, the project was very personal. It was use illustration to represent something that's important to you. So the project needs to be autobiographical. The third thing that a project needs, and this is really my big dirty secret, and I'm gonna just go ahead and say it, your project needs to be viral. It needs to be shareable. It needs to be something that your students are gonna be so excited about making that they're gonna share it on places like Instagram. And from there, they're gonna do the advertising for you. All of my classes that have done well have this element. The project is something that students go out to Instagram and they share what they're making because they're so excited about it. They're proud of what they made. So you might be wondering, okay, so you need to have a project that's relevant, that makes sense. And you need to have a project that's autobiographical, that it's personally meaningful. Yes, that makes sense. But now I'm saying that has to be viral. Well, of course you can't predict if something's going to really be viral, like millions and millions of people are gonna see it. I still haven't reached that level but it does need to be shareable. And I think that's easier than it might sound. In order for something to be shareable, you just need to think about what can students make that will be easy to explain and share to their following on social media. 
I'm gonna use another example from one of my classes. This one's called Sweet Spots, expressing big ideas in small editorial illustrations. So the project was to create a series of little illustrations that are called spot illustrations. These are basically like, imagine small illustrations that might decorate the text in a magazine or something like that. Without getting too far into the details of exactly what went into the student project, I can say that the illustrations that people made were really fun to look at and the students were super proud of them and they shared them on their Instagram feeds. And what was interesting about this project is that it was multi-part. So it wasn't just one thing that they made for the class project. It was like eight different illustrations per student. And many of those students have shared many of their illustrations made in that class, mentioned me and tagged my class. And all of that drives people to my class. I can't say exactly what the numbers are, but I can just say that it's because of this kind of viral social element of my projects going out into the world that brings people back to my class. And I've seen a lot of students come in just through these referrals, but you still might be wondering, like, how can you really guarantee that people are actually going to share what they make in your class project? Well, I can just say, again, it's not accidental. It's something that I actually build right into the class. I implore my students, I encourage them throughout my classes to share their work as they're making it. I clearly define deliverables in the class. Like I say, first do this, then do this, and then maybe share this on the class projects page and be sure to share it on your social media using the hashtag and then whatever the hashtag is for that class. All of my classes have a unique hashtag starting from my, my uh, biggest class actually, Odd Body. So this is a class I did in 2018. This was kind of like when I realized that this is how you do a project is you make it fun and shareable and make sure you include a hashtag and use social media to generate new leads to your classes. So Odd Bodies was hashtag Odd Bodies illustration. Sweet Spots was hashtag Sweet Spots illustration. My most recent class, Drawing is Important, it's hashtag Drawing is Important class. So it's not just a matter of hoping people share the project because it's share worthy. It's about actually encouraging your students to go on social media and share their projects there. And I think that that is far more effective as a marketing tool than doing any advertising or trying to beg people to take your class. And so this will probably take some thought. It's not necessarily an easy task for you to think of a project that meets all these criteria but i can say this is one of the biggest things having the project that hits these kind of three targets so successful i will just say that having a project that includes these three criteria including that it's relevant to the thing that you're trying to teach it's autobiographical and it's highly shareable hopefully viral these things are huge drivers for the success in my Skillshare classes. Okay, so I have one more tip, and I think this is as important as the project, which is about what to even teach in the first place. Like, how do you know what to teach? And of course, you should be teaching something that you're good at, but there's two more things that you wanna add to this. The second is teaching something that is unique to you. And the third is that there's a market for it. It's in demand. There's a demand for what you're teaching. So. Think of these three things as three circles of a Venn diagram. So circle one is you're good at it. Circle two is it's unique to you. And circle three is it's in demand. When you're trying to think of what you wanna teach, you could actually start from any one of these circles and then ask what the other two might be as well. So often when I'm thinking about what I can teach, I'm one of many thousands of illustrators out there. We're all teaching the same kind of stuff. What is there a current demand for? So when I went out to teach my style class called the style class, there were virtually no classes teaching how to find your illustration style, at least on Skillshare. So I started there. I thought there is definitely a demand. People are asking me, how do you find your style? And there's no classes teaching this right now. So I jumped on that. 
On the other hand, my first class, Inky Illustration, really taught Photoshop. It was a Photoshop class. And I knew then that, of course, Photoshop is something I can teach. So there is a demand for that. But then in the case of Inky Illustrations, I also had to think, how am I different from all those Photoshop classes that are probably already being taught? In that case, I already knew that I was good at it. So I had those two circles. I knew there was a demand for a Photoshop class and I knew that I am good at Photoshop. The question was, what am I uniquely good at when it comes to Photoshop? And for me, it was using Photoshop to bring in sort of handmade textures that I made with like ink and I scanned it in and brought it in to Photoshop and made surprisingly kind of handmade looking illustrations. And I called the class Inky Illustrations combining digital and analog illustration. And so that was my kind of trifecta of, you know, what, what made this class something I should be teaching. And it was those three things. It was the in demand, it was the thing that I'm good at and the thing that I'm uniquely good at all wrapped up in this thing called inky illustrations. And for all the classes that I teach on Skillshare, this is the sort of first thing that I do, I think, what are those three Venn diagram things for whatever it is I wanna teach? And once I can answer those, then I can go and move on to the next thing, which we've already covered, which is what kind of project could I design to teach this particular kind of skill or this kind of technique? So at the time that I'm recording this video right now, it's the end of 2022. Skillshare is making changes in terms of how they pay their teachers and the biggest effect really comes down to that we're earning less for the same amount of minutes watched. We're earning less for the kind of effort we put into our classes. So that's not a great thing, but I'm trying to stay positive and think, you know, this is a tighter time for our economy. People are pulling back on their subscriptions. People are, are getting subscription fatigue. And I think Skillshare is just trying to think of how to stay afloat as a business. I don't really know how it all works. And I can tell you that seeing a drastic dip in how much I earn per month on Skillshare is very scary. It makes me start thinking about where else I could put my classes. And full disclosure, I am now thinking about that. Maybe I should be self-hosting my classes on Kajabi or something like that. I don't know, maybe uh, teaching on Udemy is a good idea now or domestic or something. I have no idea. Up to this point, Skillshare has been the only game in town for me and they've really supported me and I've really felt good about just having my classes there. It's easy for my students to know where to find me and I really think that is good value. You might think that $160 a year is a steep price to pay for a Skillshare subscription, but I can tell you that if I was self-hosting my classes, I don't know if I would sell my classes for anything less than $200 a pop. So you get good value because you're not only able to take my classes and all my classes, you can take all the classes ever on Skillshare. So I still think $160 is good value if you want to be learning from lots of different teachers and have access to that huge pool of knowledge. And again, Skillshare classes are top quality. These are not, you know, classes by just anybody they have standards and they cut out classes and they reject classes all the time because they don't meet their standards and from what i know i think they're tightening up on the quality even more so it's even harder to get your class up on skillshare in the first place but hopefully by watching this video this gives you a little bit of the upper hand and an edge and i do wish you success as you create your own skillshare classes and if this video helped you please do let me know hit that thumb subscribe all that stuff i appreciate your time watching me here uh, i just want to say just before you go i am kind of going through a transition over to being more of a podcaster. So I'm still gonna be making videos here on YouTube. I've realized in the last few months that it's really like in my heart to become more of a podcaster than a YouTuber. Now I've already mentioned this on my Instagram account, but my new podcast is going to be called Thoughts on Illustration. And it's a podcast about showing up and growing up as a commercial illustrator. And really it's going to be a little bit more of a long form monologue style podcast it's going to be me talking and the nice thing is you might notice that here on youtube i don't really put a lot of visuals on my videos and that's because i just 
I don't like doing that. I don't like playing the YouTube game and trying to make my videos as visually engaging as possible. I'm trying to give you value through the content, the sort of basic content of me talking to you like this. But to me, that says podcaster. And so that's where I'm going to lean into. And I will be posting my episodes here on the channel and I'll be making videos like this to supplement what I'm doing on the podcast because sometimes I have stuff that's just not gonna fit into the category of stuff that I'll be doing on the podcast. Anyway, if you wanna you know, keep in touch with me about what's happening with that podcast, I'll be announcing things here or you can follow me over on Instagram at Mr. Tom Froze. Anyway, thanks for watching all the way to the end. I'll see you in the next one.